Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. Today, all new Simply the Best. Get inspired. Two beautiful people spreading inspirations through love, passion, persistence, and hard work. Marilyn Wilson is the author of the new book, Life Outside the Box. Her passion takes her to the essence of Norway. I only had myself. I didn't have... Norwegian Gearness is one of the 10 unique individuals highlighted in Marilyn's book. Outside the box means kind of stepping outside of social expectation. His extraordinary journey is much more than a story of success. It's a story of love for life and the lady who gave it to him, his mother. From delivering newspapers, cooking waffles, and scrubbing floors, to the success of his fragrance named Lila in honor of his mother, Gear is bringing the essence of Norway to Vancouver. That I have so many people from Canada asking about when it's coming to Canada. Plus more Life Outside the Box book launch highlights. All these coming up. Happy, happy. So proud to have these two beautiful, kind-spirited people on the show. On the show. Norwegian entrepreneur Geir Ness flew to Vancouver to attend the book launching of Life Outside the Box by Vancouver rights author Marilyn Wilson. Get ready to be inspired. Welcome to Vancouver. Thank it's you. so nice to see you. Thank you for having me here. It's a fantastic city. I absolutely love it. You love Vancouver. Mm. I heard that this is already your fifth time here. That's true. And I love it more every time I'm here. <laughs> You've been traveling all over the world, Gear. Yes. What's going on? I don't know. I don't really have a, a life. I traveled <laughs> like 320 days for the past 10 years. So like, zzz. I woke up this morning and said, where am I? Oh, I just landed in LA. And now I'm here in, <laughs> in Vancouver. But it's good. It's all good. Do you even remember what hotel you're in? I don't. I wake up in the morning, I have to write it down on a piece of paper. It's like, hmm, where am I today? Where am I? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know when you have to wake up in the night and go to the bathroom, it's like, boom, boom. It bang. <laughs> <laughs> I blue marks everywhere when I wake up. <laughs> but it's all wonderful, you know, that makes life more interesting. We're in the fan club right now here in downtown Vancouver, and we are celebrating the book launching of Marilyn. She is such a fantastic woman. I had to say, I met her through some friends of mine a few years ago, and we were talking, and my friends had said, you know, talk about me, and she goes, okay, so I meet her, and then she interviewed me, and we really connected right away, and she's such a uh, warm, fabulous person. You know, when you talk to her, it's just like you're having a great glass of champagne with someone that's like that. You know, you just like, she's alive and she's wonderful. She's a warm heart. She's funny. She has all those elements. And uh, she really uh, is so interesting. And she wanted to know everything about you, the story behind it. And that's what I um, love about this book, that she really went deep down and wanted to find out, okay, what have you done to come to where you are today, you know, and really just not this boom, 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 but really the fun and the story that takes, you know, takes you really into what she have done and like what I've done. And I love that about her, that she really wanted to do more than just uh, ask, okay, you, you know, celebrities and all that, which is fantastic, but but it's more than that, you know, it's just like, and, 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 I, and I love that about um, when I was reading um, her book now, it's like, like, this is really fun, uh, interesting. All the, the people she has on there, and I was very impressed with everything she done and all the work she had been doing hours of the hours, you know, with yeah. all the amazing. And I, I'm very thrilled, I'm very honored to be part of this book. When you're reading your story, your own story, how'd you feel? Like, is it like, is this me really? Yes, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. It's like, who is this person? That is really fun to read all this craziness. Like, oh my God, it's me. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing what you do though when you, um, you have to obviously believe in yourself and you have to have a goal and how you're doing it, but you never know what's going to happen. And that's what's, what's fun about, you know, 
create something. You just go with it and you never know what's going to happen, but you have to stick with it. Even when it goes down or up, you just be true to yourself and know the truth and it will happen. But if you're starting to question yourself, that's when things happen the other way. So you believe in yourself and, and trust yourself and have good people around you too, it's important. You know, sometimes we have people around us that are not good for us, that are negative and put you down all the time. And we have, you know what, just clean it up, baby. And just, <laughs> okay, I think that's important. I'm sure there are a lot of challenges uh, in your life as you're, you know, yeah. growing. Um, what is the number one challenge in your life that you think that it was un unimaginable to overcome, but then you did, you did, you made it? Right. I think uh, in the business that I'm in, it's the, you know, fragrance and cosmetic business. I think because you have all these big names around you and all these people that, you know, were so glamorous and beautiful when I started and I didn't have any money to even buy a suit, you know, so I started, <laughs> you know, and you get intimidated see all these people, oh my God, you know, they have this beautiful, you know, packaging and this and that and I only had myself and my sweet little bottle and, uh, you know, and what I had to do to overcome that, but I believed in myself 100% and that's the reason that I made it happen. I didn't question that part of it, but I, it was intimidating to see all these people, all this, the tools they have to sell the products. I only had myself. I didn't have millions of dollars in campaign and on Vogue and L and all this magazine. I had myself, you know, so I had to sell myself and um, that's what I did. Good gear, you have a million dollar attitude. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and that's what you have to have, you know? You gotta believe in yourself and you gotta be people believing it that you are it. And when you do that and believing it, it has nothing to do with you working yourself with I'm the best in the world and all that. It has something to do with you know self that you in control, you know? You are the one. And uh, when people feel that, they feel something special about you and what you can do, you can you will make it happen. But if you start to question yourself and I don't know and well, you don't know. No. You know what? You are number one, you know, in your mind and always believe in that. That's right. Stop questioning yourself. Right. But I have an another question for you, Gear. Why fragrance? Why? Why what is it that attracted you to uh, believe in your fragrance and start something um. that is so unique and so well, you know, Wonderful. I'm smelling you right now. That's why <laughs> you smell fantastic. And and well, the reason I started was that I had no money. I was very broke, and I came to LA to study um, producing, directing, acting, and so forth. And I got a job in a department store um, spraying people. You know, like a fragrance model spraying people. Oh, yeah. And people asked me where I was from. And when I said Norway, they all asked me, "Does Norway have their own fragrance?" And I find out we never did. So I started to think about, you know, when I grew up uh, in Norway and my mom always took me up in the mountains and we had such a good time together. And I remember the scent, you know, up in those mountains are so unique. They're so clean and so fresh and have all these elements of what you think about Norway. If you haven't been there, if you close your eyes and up in the mountains, and, mm, this is going to this smell I like. So I worked with a perfumer and I come up with a scent and I borrowed money from a friend of mine and all the stories in this book, you know, so it's really fun to read it. But anyway, um, I, that's where I come up with the scent because I wanted to uh, create something that wasn't available and I always love scents. I always love flowers and all those different things, but I wanted something that was fresh and light, something that was very different than anything else. So if you're allergic, you know, or sensitive, you can be able to wear it. And um, of course, I named my fragrance after my mom, Lila. Lila. Yeah. I, I, like, I like that name, Lila. Yeah. I always, I mean, I love my mom more than anything and I love the name, so it was a good fit. And then I wanted to create, you know, my, my childhood in a bottle, like Norway in a bottle. And, um, and that's what um, I did. And it's interesting now when people smell it, oh my God, it smells like Norway. And that's exactly the response that I wanted. You know, something that was different than anything else. So if I wear your perfume, they're going to say, hey. You know Have you been, <laughs> <Or are> you, <laughs> <laughs> you been to Norway? You've been to Norway, right? Yeah. Yes. And I haven't showered because I still want my my that, smell. That's right. My, exactly. my fragrance. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Marilyn is really, really happy to, uh, to I mean, 
for you coming here and support the launching of her first book. This oh. is her first book. Yeah, I'm very, very honored that um, you know she invited me to come, and I'm very, very proud of her. And I think this is a book that when people um, read it, they will feel like this is something I can do also. You know what I mean? It's not just about uh, um, a book about stories. It's about uh, how we have to believe in ourselves to really make it happen. And uh, you can get a lot of great tips from people and hopefully the story that I have also will um, hopefully motivate people that has a dream to make it happen. That's wonderful. What's the best part of your journey? Hey, to me, sitting here today, meeting you, meeting great people. No, I'm seriously, meeting people uh, and meeting fantastic people. I've been very, very fortunate to be part of everything from, uh, you know, the Grammys, the Oscars, the Golden Globes to... Hey, how was that? It was fantastic. And you know where my favorite, what my favorite person was there? The most beautiful person in the whole uh, Golden Globes? Who is it? Jane Fonda. She looked amazing. There was a lot of beautiful stars, but you know, she's starting to be like a grown-up woman now. And you know, she looked fantastic and uh, everything about her was just like, wow. I, I was showing her, it's like, Jane Fonda? Really? You know? Whatever she do, uh, keep it, <laughs> keep that going. Because I was very impressed with her. She looked fantastic when she walked in there. It was like, everybody was like talking to each other and they see like, and all the big stars come by, people are like, okay, you know, and then she comes like, fantastic. She looks amazing. Amazing, amazing. I was very impressed, you know, and we had so much fun. We went there and all the parties afterward. It was a great event, and uh, I really had a lot of fun there. It was wonderful. That's wonderful. I had fun too when I was there last year. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a great place. I think it's the best uh, party in Hollywood is the Golden Globe because yeah. everybody's more relaxed and all that, you know, and the other parties, it's nice as well, but Golden Globes is my favorite. I think yeah. it's wonderful. Here, going back to your humble, humble beginnings, have you ever dreamed of being very successful right now and going to all these places, traveling all over the world and inspiring a lot of people? Uh, well, I never thought about create a fragrance or do what I do today, but also I'm glad that I can actually make things happen and with my story and try to motivate people and try to give back, you know, to what people gave you when you started. So I never forget where I'm coming from and I still wanted to make a difference in, um, you know, in the world. So uh, it's wonderful for me to be able to work with um, everything from, uh, you know, all the charity works that I'm doing and, um, and the animal shelters I'm starting to work with now too gives me um, a lot of pleasure and see that I can make a difference in helping all the animals that need a home and need help. That's wonderful. And, of course, the scent of Norway is coming here to Canada, coming to Vancouver. Yes, it's coming to Nordstrom's in September. And uh, um, I already sell my, uh, my, uh, my fragrance at Nordstrom now in the United States. And um, I'm very excited, you know, to come back to, to Canada. And uh, they're going to have it here. I think they're opening the store in September here in Vancouver. So that will be a great, um, it's going to be a fantastic opening. They will have all artists from all over the world coming there and uh, it's going to be a huge, fantastic opening. So I have so many people from Canada asking about when it's coming to Canada, when it's coming to Canada. I have all these requests all the time. So now they can get it, you know, at Nordstrom. I think they also have it at Nordstrom.com. They have a new skincare line called Skin of Norway. Um, it's um, made for people that has, you know, sensitive, dry skin. Um, it's an anti-aging, meaning that the ingredients really help. I have Norwegian Cloudberry from Norway, which is pure vitamin C, goes into your skin and do skin damage from the inside of your skin and so we pre, um, repair um, damaged skin cells and building up the cells from the inside so I have eye serum moisturizer mask face mask um, cleanser the whole line called skin of Norway That's so wonderful mm. wonderful what's the best part of this all I think healthy and having fun you know enjoying what you have today nothing about oh my god next year and two no we live right now enjoy yourself right now I mean, seriously, sitting here with you and looking outside, there's all the beautiful people here and we've been having so much fun with Marilyn's party today and her book is fantastic, so I think it'll be available at Amazon and right, Amazon.com and all that later, yeah. So um, I have so many of my friends that wanted to buy that book, so we're going to be, uh, Amazon's going to be very busy and all the other places. I know, I'm looking forward to it. Here, thank you so much. Such an honor to meet you. Thank you, you for having me and I have a gift for you too. Uh, 
Oh, Here's a little okay. collectible perfume bottle. Oh, and smell it again. I know you have it on already, don't you? Do not spray it on you. Mm. See? Oh, <laughs> See? Norway in a bottle. That's a little collectible bottle, that but I have it. So... See? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That, mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow, the smell of Norway. Yes. That's wonderful. Well, you have fun, and I'll see you yes. uh, September. September. At Nordstrom's, absolutely. Okay. Yes. He's awesome. We'll be back. Don't go away. Marilyn Wilson will be next. Congratulations on your first book, Marilyn. I am so excited. This has been um, 18 months of my life and, and 55,000 hard-earned words. And I think, uh, oh my, probably 12 of us, 13 of us in bed together between the distributor, the publisher, and the 10 people I wrote on it myself. So we've had a very full bed for the last few months. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cozy bed. That's it's good. A cozy bed. Very productive one too. Well, yeah. But just like a family, there were there were moments, you know. <laughs> of course, uh, that happens all the time. All the so, time. So, Marilyn, why life outside the box? My publisher picked this title for me. I was really struggling with it. And what I love about uh, over ten years of interviewing, what struck me is everybody has a different definition of success. Everybody is choosing to define uh, how they live their life um, differently from each other. And it gave me permission to step outside. I'm okay, my lumps and bumps are okay. There's a path for me that's unique to me. And uh, so life outside the box means kind of stepping outside of social expectations and finding what makes you truly happy and finding your purpose in life. That's amazing. Actually, I was going to ask you about that. And that's my last question. I'll tell you about it later. But, but anyway, so this is, truly, I, I, this is truly overpowering. Ten different interesting stories in your book, Lila. Oh, gee. Life outside the box. And this is your copy, you know. Oh, thank you. Personally autographed. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So how how did the stories of your subjects affect your life? Every person that's interviewed uh, with me has brought me a concept. And one of the concepts, really profound one, was that I needed to find people that supported me. Like, I tend to be insecure, so you find people that shore you up. If you're not good at something, you, you put a community of people around you that support you in those areas. And so for the last uh, 18 months, that was the biggest one for me. I have put community around me that I help them and they help me and together we raise our spirits. And so tonight, this is actually a celebration of that community. We have over 250 people coming, not just because of me and not just because of the book, but because of the community we have built. We're coming to celebrate the one person can succeed, we can all succeed, we can help each other to succeed. So I honestly could not have done it without Gear Ness who told me, you can do this, you're a superstar, and flew into town just for this launch. Um, I have numerous people here that, that continually shore me up and say, you can do this. And when you have those people behind you, you can get through those tough moments when your fingers over the delete button going, I can't write, I can't do this. I almost deleted everything one night in a panic. And, and there was somebody there for me saying, no, it's okay, you can do this. So that, that was one of the biggest things, the community and putting people around you where you benefit each other. So at the end of the day, we're all raised up. And so that's what this is tonight. It's a celebration of dance. It's a celebration of singing. It's a celebration of joy and laughter. I'm so happy you're here. I mean, this is such an important message for me. Uh, over 10 years, over 150 interviews, everyone gives me goosebumps. There's moments in every interview that, that a little bell goes off in my head and I know I've heard something important. And when I go back and transcribe the interview, I try to find that moment and say, what's the message for me here? And I've grown up. It's helped me grow up. It's so funny that you are always the interviewer. So how does it feel for you to be interviewed? <laughs> You've been interviewing people all your life. I mean, oh my goodness. Your magazine, I mean, you're a freelance writer. Yeah. I actually have 
had to learn to, to do it. I'm always afraid my mouth will go before my mind that I don't, I need a sensor button on here. Um, and this week, you're my third interview this week, so I'm starting to get a little more used to it. But honestly, and I think everybody feels this way, I've always said everybody has a story to tell. It's a matter of asking the right questions. And yet when I look at my story, I say, oh, it's not interesting. And that's what people tell me too. And when they see their story written, sometimes they go, oh, wow, that's kind of interesting. Yes, we're all unique. We just don't think our life is unique. We think everybody else's life is more interesting, and that's not true. We're all living the path we're meant to live. Whether we're a celebrity, some of my best interviews are people that are almost unknown. They're le leading incredible lives, but, but the spotlight is not turned on them, and, and it's just uh, a privilege to be the first media they get. I like that. I really like that. I really like that. I know you're a little bit busy. Everybody's waiting for you. Uh, uh, everybody has a story to tell. So with these subjects that you have, uh, what, how, how difficult is it for them to tell their real life story? It's like a revelation to the whole entire world, right? Some people can be very private about what really happened to them. So how do you get that? How do you get that uh, to, 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 to turn on that switch? I'm very fortunate. I start every interview the same way. Where were you born? What were you like growing up? Is there stories you can remember from your childhood or your youth that, that indicate you might head to this path in life? And I assure everyone that I will not publish until they've seen what I've written. And so if I haven't gotten the story right or it's a bit too revealing, we back it off. So I do work very collaboratively with people because they, it's their story, it's their life. And I have to really honor the fact how hard it is. And because of that, people share incredible things with me. And sometimes we agree that some things need to stay hinted at and, and other things. But, but usually when people come to me, they know what I do and they're willing to share as long as they get to just see it and feel comfortable with it. So when it comes out, they're prepared. I've always told people I, the writing is okay. It's not my, my passion per se. There's moments it's, it's like being in meditation, but I love the interview. The first interview I ever gave, uh, I sat there for two hours. I had goosebumps up my arms. I walked outside. I was 49 years old when I did it. I walked outside. The sky was sparkling. The sun was shining. And I said, this is it. This is it. So to be privileged to run those interviews, you have to do something with it. So what I do is write, and, and it's uh, sometimes easy and sometimes it's very hard. I'm certainly proud of it when it's done, but it is work. I mean, it, just like you know, you, it's work. And so, um, but yeah, it's the interview. The interview drives me. I've got four or five lined up. Every time I talk to somebody, I say, when are we gonna interview? When are we gonna interview? And you could just hear it. They'll share some small part of their life and, and the bells go on in my head. It's, it's just like smelling an aroma from the kitchen. I know there's a story there and it's unique to them. And I love that. I truly love that. <laughs> life outside the box. And thank you so much for coming. I appreciate having you here tonight and I wish you could stay all night, but, but you're here now and uh, we really love having you. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. The Louisa Marshall Band is excited and ready to rock Kennedy Sports Pub in Delta on Saturday, May 9th. Showtime at 9 p.m. This summer, fall in love all over again. Jose Marie Chan, a love to last a lifetime. At the Massey Theater, Saturday, June 20th. Showtime at 7 p.m. Tickets available at MasseyTheater.com or call 778-387-1575. Thanks to Marilyn Wilson, Gary Ness and Influence Publishing, Julie Salisbury. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to pick up the inaugural issue of Metrovan Independent News at your nearby Filipino stores and other businesses. Please don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, always be kind. Let's always stop cyberbullying. Um, see you next week.